Hello, welcome to Life Matters. We have a very special guest who uh, never went back home to Canada. She <laughs> stayed here for the entire week, and now she's on again on a different topic, but similar. Well, welcome, Anne Belanger. Thank you, Brendan. Thank you for having me back. Now, today you're going to tell us or teach us a little bit about the intricacies between Womb International, which uh, is, has pro-life underpinnings, and dealing with um, various international agencies. I think you had one in Geneva and then the UN. So I'll let you uh, inform us what, what is yes. going on out there. Yes, and, yes. Thank uh, you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So. Um, let, let me lay out the groundwork first for Womb International. Womb International is the governing body of all of Womb's affiliates throughout the world. So when the Billings Ovulation Method first was developed in 1953, it was trialed and it was um, researched and developed and Doctors and, and, and other interested individuals started to learn the Billings ovulation method so they could teach it to people, to their patients, to friends, to neighbors. This went throughout the world, so people were bringing this information to other countries as well. In fact, the Billings themselves were traveling to different countries teaching the ovulation method. So. Uh, now, the, they, they were medical doctors they married. They themselves were both medical doctors. That's right. Dr. John Billings was a neurosurgeon. Dr. Um, um, Lynn Billings, Evelyn Billings, she was a pediatrician. Mm -hmm. they, were, they were both Catholic. They were married. They had nine children. Um, they were approached by their bishop, uh, who had, knowing that they were doctors, asked them to research information on fertility. And so that's how the whole premise of the Billings Ovulation Method began. But when it became obvious that there were many people in many different countries using this method, they recognized the need for having a governing body. And so that's how Woolmerch National was first born. That was 1978. And so uh, Women's International's role is to provide correct, authentic material and information to all of the national organizations of the Billings Ovulation Method in their respective countries. At the moment, we have 55 accredited affiliates, and there are more on the, on the making on coming up. Um, so this is this is Women's International. Now, in 1994, one of our representatives attended the Cairo International Conference. After that experience, she was able to see that it would be extremely beneficial for the countries that are attending this international conference and, and the subsequent ones to learn about the Billings ovulation method on a more global scale. So she returned in 1995 to the Beijing conference. And if you'll remember, in 1995, the Beijing conference, there was a, a huge push on um, reproductive rights and reproductive technologies and, and women's having a right to abortion and, and women have a, a right to to um, not become pregnant, so to use contraceptive, ir irrespective of any circumstance. Um, but the representative, one of our representatives who went, was very astute and saw it as an opportunity where we could actually engage with women from other countries and other cultures and teach them that there is a better way. And it was actually at that time when she approached me and asked me if I could become involved as a representative. And um, I had just become an accredited teacher mm -hmm. at that time in the Billings Ovulation Method. But as far as my family was concerned, it wasn't the right time for me to be involved uh, in, in such a global way. Um, but she remained involved. 
and she would present the Billings ovulation method to everyone who would listen to her and, and uh, meet with her. And she would engage with some of the um, members of the different countries that were present at these UN meetings. Now those conferences were UN instituted um, and every year the UN holds a series of meetings throughout its different locations. So in New York we have three major con commissions that take place throughout the year. In January there's a commission on social and development. In March there's the commission on the status of women. In April there's the commission on population and development. And then outside of those main commissions, they have several other monthly meetings and um, other uh, committees that take place. Now, Womb International formally became involved with the United Nations as an accredited or, let's say, a status NGO, non-governmental organization, in 2012. So in 2012, we were given a status in which we could engage with the UN and apply for opportunities to address um, different commissions. And a commission, if you'll understand, it's, it's a series of meetings that take place over a two-week period, typically, sometimes one week often two weeks. And so the Commission on the Status of Women is every March and it's two weeks long and it is uh, an opportunity for the member states of the United Nations of which there are almost 200 because it involves almost every country. If, if, and these member states vote and discuss certain resolutions. So when we got involved in 2012, so it's been 12 or 13, almost 12 years now, um, it was with the idea that we wanted the United Nations to understand that our organization taught women about fertility health through the Billings ovulation method. And we were able to um, present to the United Nations that earlier uh, in our history, back in 1978, when Womb International was first formed, um, that formation was also in response to the UN's own decree because the World Health Organization had been introduced to the Billings ovulation method in the mid-70s and they decided to do a study on the Billings ovulation method and its effectiveness in postponing or avoiding pregnancy. So they conducted a study over a three-year period which involved five countries, okay? Mm -hmm. And what they found over that three-year period is that for the, the women who were actively uh, and informed using the Billings ovulation method to postpone pregnancy, they had a success rate that varied very little between 97.2 to 97.8 percent. That said to the UN and consequently to the whole world that the strategies involved within the Billings ovulation method are the most comprehensive and perfect strategies that can be employed to avoid pregnancy to understand when a woman enters into fertility and to recognize when she has come out of fertility. 
And so by doing that, the UN then suggested to the doctor's billings that they attach their name to the ovulation method. So prior to this study, the Billings ovulation method was simply called the ovulation method. After the UN and the World Health Organization advised the Billings to attach their name to their method, that's when it became now the Billings ovulation method. And that was because the UN was instructing them that by doing this, by putting their name to this method, it would distinguish it from all other methods. As far as I know, there are not other studies of other natural methods that are done by the UN. Like the Creighton model, for instance? Correct. But of course, the, the Creighton model itself is a model of the Billings ovulation method. It's hmm. a model of what Dr. John and Lynn Billings have developed. And, and Dr. Hilgers, who developed the Creighton model, was a doctor who worked with the Billings in the early 70s. Hmm. So yeah. he learned the method from them, and then he devised his model of it. So that's what the Creighton model is. And it's more commonly referred to now as NAPRO technology. Okay, yep. Okay, but it is a model of the Billings ovulation method. Mm -hmm. There is also another model of the ovulation method that is in South America, I think, or Central America. It may be family of the Americas who had that. And so that's another model of the ovulation method. But um, the Billings ovulation method is the authentic one that the United Nations has um, designated as being 97.2 to 97.8 effect, effective. Um, so from that point on, the NGO, Womb International, has always been able um, to bring to the United Nations the information that natural fertility uh, is a, a, a proper and perfectly healthy um, and effective way for women to understand and uh, work with their fertility. So, so you can use it for either not having a child or spacing children or getting pregnant, is right, that correct? Right, right. Well, what about uh, the, uh, the contraceptive people? They're saying, well, Billings does it all without ingesting any drugs, but you know, we have uh, steroidal con contraceptives here, and what is, what is their success rate? Did, do you compete with them? Well, no, we don't, we don't compete with them ourselves. We are strictly focused on what we do with natural fertility in the Billings ovulation method. It is possible that the contraceptive um, industries may find that if women understand how their fertility works properly, they won't need to be using contraception. So in 2017, I made a presentation to the UN uh, through the Permanent Observer Mission of the Holy See. And in my presentation, I alluded to the um, respective aspects that the Billings ovulation method is, is per perfectly free and it is uh, free of all side effects. It is natural, it is healthy, it has uh, no barriers in terms of climate or environment or language or philosophy or creed or religion. Every woman's body works the same and so it's perfectly healthy for every woman. Um, but that if the contraceptive industry was interested in promoting their, um, their products, then it might not be in the best interest of, for women to understand this knowledge. But we think it's helpful for all women.
women are perfectly free to make their choices, but they can't make choices if they don't have all the information. So we want all women to understand there is a natural, healthy way of understanding your fertility. And uh, now, uh, what about you, you had gone over to Geneva, Switzerland. What was that all about? Right, so in 2019, I traveled to Geneva to attend the World Health Assembly. So the United Nations has several branches, and one of them is the World Health Organization, the branch that did the study on the Billings ovulation method back in 1978. Well, every year, they have a, a, a commission, a two-week um, commission, um, called the World Health Assembly, and it's held at the United Nations in Geneva, at that location. And it's where the health ministers of all the countries come together, and they discuss what policies they could collaborate on, or agree on. And um, when I went there in 2019, it was to meet with some of those health ministers. And in doing so, they then were encouraged to learn about natural fertility. The Billings ovulation method is, is um, perfectly viable and, and healthy and effective. And then that led to conversations and communications with their representatives at the United Nations in New York. And it is with those contacts in New York that we are able to engage in events with member states in order to present the Billings Ovulation Method to uh, a greater body of people. And uh, do your opponents, which are the pro-abortion groups, do they try to block you in any way? Well, Either. We, you know, we apply for our, um, our presentations, and the UN has always been gracious in permitting them. Um, so whether, whether or not they try to uh, um, divert us, we are um, able to, to make our, our points known in our presentations and reach several people. I, I, I've had people say that it's, it's dangerous to be working with the UN, but I, um, I as my predecessors, see it as an opportunity where we can do good. That um, there is an opportunity to bring about well, good. What do you mean by dangerous? Um, because some people will look at the UN and say, oh, that's just no good. That's just a bad organization. That's not mm -hmm. very, very good. And so um, I can appreciate that because there is a lot of information that comes out from the United Nations that may not be <laughs> in favor of um, natural fertility as what I'm involved with. Mm -hmm. But um, I try and see the good in everything. Mm -hmm. So if I see an opportunity to speak with health ministers or ambassadors in New York or to make presentations on the Billings Ovulation Method, then those are all good, positive things. And what are these ministers, what do they, what is the, uh, the most encouraging, uh, you know, when you give a presentation, they go, really, this can happen, really? What, what, it, no. it is, what are some of the things? That's, that that's a very good point, Brendan. It's really quite interesting because um, for the most part, people have learned that using a natural method to avoid a pregnancy is not very effective. And that's sort of the prevailing thought, that if you don't want to get pregnant, then use a contraception. But in essence, that's not really the case. When they find out that they can actually learn the Billings Ovulation Method, and it's not that difficult to learn, um, they are just amazed at how positive and powerful this information is for them and could be for the women in their country. 
and the families in their country, the mm -hmm. children in their country. We have school programs also that are um, directed towards youth to help them understand how their fertility works. Because if you understand it, you're going to respect it. You're, it's not something that you're going to want to throw away. You're going to mm -hmm. cherish it. Well, when you say school programs, is that in uh, your home country or other countries throughout the world? Uh, what what so, do you mean by a school program? So, Womb International's first and immediate affiliate is Womb Australia. And Womb Australia uh, is very involved in having developed uh, high school programs mm -hmm. for teenagers to understand their fertility. And so in some of their high schools, they have it running. We did have it running in a high school in Toronto, one of the mm. main cities in Canada. Mm -hmm. And it's possible that here in, in the United States, BOMA USA may also have connections with where it may be um, running in, in their schools. And do you, so. ha uh, well that's great to hear because uh, for years in Massachusetts and around the country, uh, for instance, Planned Parenthood is always trying to, they use the word comprehensive sex education, which all it so, is, is it's, it's a, it's when it, they, they do two things. One is they want to get it into as young a grade as possible. And then it's really about uh, uh, avoidance, you know, by using condoms or uh, IUDs or whatever. Uh, interuterine devices. Mm -hmm. That's right. <laughs> and um, uh, so this would be, you know, if this was taught in the schools. I call it comprehensive fertility education. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's a yep. good one. Because uh, when, when people understand their fertility, they want to respect it. And that goes for young people. When a young, when a young girl, a 16-year-old, understands her fertility, she may not be so inclined to take a, a medication that would interfere with it or to use some sort of barrier device that would prevent conception. You see, she, she begins to appreciate how beautiful her fertility is and she doesn't want to disrupt it. I think sometimes we're afraid that if we teach children about fertility, then they'll become more and more interested in, in having sexual intercourse at an earlier age, but when, when a girl begins to menstruate, the most helpful thing for her is to understand why and how she is menstruating. Mm -hmm. And then she's trained into how to look for any abnormalities or problems she might have with it. Or she's happy to see that everything is working properly in the way it should. Does, uh uh, Womb International, do they um, try to reach other segments of society like late teens to early 20s? Do they have any types of programs that... They, they do have these, these programs. They're on their website. Oh, they you, are. You, yep, you can look at them there. If you go to the Womb International website, you can look for resources and you'll see... Is that see. .org or .com, Womb International? Yep, so that's uh, wombinternational.org. .org, okay. Yeah. So they would yeah. have it there, and you can find out a lot yep. more information there. That's right. Oh, very good. Well, I yeah. really appreciate you coming all the way from yeah. Ottawa adjacent. Yes, yes, yeah, And, uh, you yeah. know, explaining this because... Yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, we had a gentleman on, on um, about two, three years ago from uh -huh. uh, USA... Uh, BOMA, is that BOMA, correct? BOMA yeah. USA. BOMA USA, yeah. and... Uh, it was the first time I'd been introduced to the topic, okay. and, and you've explained it so much, uh, well, very well. Well, I'm uh, glad. Thank you. And I appreciate it, and appreciate your efforts. And one final thing is, has any countries out there um, accepted what you have and try to teach it in their country now? Yes, so most of these organizations that we have in our countries, and in these different countries, they are grassroots organizations started by people like you and I, they're mm -hmm. not government led. But uh, the more that we talk about it, the more governments are beginning to see that it is the right way to go. So I've had mm -hmm. some very positive uh, interactions this last couple of years with, um, with government officials who would like to see more of the Billings ovulation method in their own countries. 
Well, Ann Belanger, thank you so much for You're coming welcome. on, and uh, we really appreciate it. And we hope folks found this show to be unique, informative, content-rich, truthful, and thought-provoking. Thanks for watching thank and you. listening. My name's Brendan O'Connell, your friend for life.